Hello everyone, Happy New Year. I am so excited to share my favorite songs of 2021 with you all. I did skip last year, or at least making a video for one, but I ended up posting a Twitter thread. I'll link that in the description. In case you don't know who I am or what my channel is about and you just like randomly clicked on this video because the algorithm recommended it to you, my name is Umu. I've been a musician for about 10 years. I play French horn, kind of the piano, and I run this YouTube channel where a bunch of classical musicians react to K-pop. So I'm here today to tell you about the songs that I really dig from the past year. Now, recently, as in maybe a month or two ago, our channel reached 750,000 subscribers and just over 300 million views. So to thank you all, we're always super late with thank you videos. Apologies about that. It's just, it's just, it's, just, it's a thing now. It's a thing now. I promised a giveaway to everyone. We are going to do an international merchandise giveaway because when we released our merch for the first time this year, we couldn't afford to send it internationally. But thanks to our kind patron, Frank, you'll be helping us out in funding this giveaway. So more details on that at the very end of the video. All right, let's get started. Number 15, Young K's Not Gonna Love. Like I said during my first listen to this album, this song makes me want to happily destroy things. And I stand by that statement. Whenever I listen to the song, it lifts my spirits, it gets my heart racing, it makes me really want to headbang, which side note, don't listen to this song while you're driving, I... Mm. A moment of the song that stands out to me is how one of the synths and the vocal line interact with each other in the chorus. Young K's vocals are on all of the offbeat, which sounds like. While the synth line itself is also on the off beats, but carries a completely different rhythm. So if you put them together, it sounds like this. Oh, numero 14, on and off, beautiful, beautiful. So this song is in the F major scale, meaning this song has these notes in it. When I was writing my script for this video and I was struggling to describe what the notes, what the harmony in this song made me feel, I just googled what mood is F major? And Google replied with, at once full of peace and joy, but also expresses effectively a light, passing regret, a mournful, but not a deeply sorrowful feeling. Listening to this song, it gives me a sense of comfort and encouragement. And a lot of that has to do with the fullness of the sound. A specific moment I can use as an example is the I'm part. I'm It's always, it's always moving forward with how the little funk guitar interacts with the bass and how the bass interacts with the vocals. And I think that's partially why I find this song feeling so motivational. Number 13, Stray Kids, Thunderous. So my first listen to this song, I didn't like it. I went into listening to it with a certain mindset and it didn't have the persistent, sharp, punchy feeling that I get from a lot of their other title tracks. So I went back in and I started paying more attention to the choreography and the choreography helped me realize what does thunder sound like? It's very round. It's very large, huge, dark rumbling. And so when that realization came to be and I changed my mindset on how to soak in the song sound, the song became an immediate favorite. We also have a lot of different musical elements that they use to help support the sound of thunder. For example, when we go into the drop, it comes on the beat and two. So not on a strong beat, it comes on a very weak beat, which I think helps us feel like this this gentle arrival. And one, and two, and three, and four, and one. Sori is on and, Kun is on one. Another reason why I like this song is because it uses a lot of my instrument, the French horn, which is rarely used in K-pop. French horn is used all the time in movie scores, and especially superhero movie scores. So I think that might be one of the main reasons why 
they chose French horns for this song where normally you would go for trombone for a big blasty sound. I believe trombone was used for God's Menu or trumpet, which is more triumphant, pep band-esque sound where French horn, that's the superheroes. They're the thunderous ones. They're coming, they're on their way. French horn. Number 12, Espa Savage. Savage. I'm a killer, this song is like a movie that I want to keep re-watching just so I can re-experience my favorite parts of the movie. There are so many things going on at all times, and they're subtle, so you have to listen really, really, really hard to it, and it just, it takes all my brain power to do it, but it just makes the whole listening experience so much more enriching. The chorus, let, let's, let's talk about that instrumental. If we listen to this bottom up, we have this synth that kind of lines up with the vocal part. And then the bass range as well, we have the kick, which helps fill in the space when other instrumentals aren't hitting at that moment. Then if we go higher in range, I think we can talk about the, what we would call a snare hit, but I do not believe this is a snare drum. It sounds like it's a hitting a sheet of metal. And then when we talk about the vocals, we have multiple vocal layers going on and they create rap harmony gimme gimme now versus gimme gimme now and so if you layer that up it sounds like gimme gimme, gimme now which creates a kind of spoken harmony in a way and then we have this really fun sprinkled in higher synths that go like wah, wah, and all that stuff the beginning of the chorus no melody we add in the song gimme gimme now and then we also add in almost like pitch percussion sound that goes like dun, 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 dun. So in the end, I think I'm, I'm drawn a lot to the fact that this song has so many short rhythms and different sounds going on. So it feels, feels like someone took a paintbrush and they did like, you know, they like the flicked the paint onto the canvas instead of doing a long painted line. And that's a really addicting sound to listen to. And um, if you want chordal analysis, please look forward to our classical musicians react to Espa Savage. That's coming out sometime this year. Wish me luck for editing it. There were a lot of disagreements to what key the song ended in, and so it's going to be an exciting watch, but very hard to edit. <laughs> Number 11, NCT 127's Lemonade. This song makes me feel so freaking sexy, sassy, and cool, which is something that I do not feel ever. So it's a nice change when listening to this song. So the instrumental for this song has a lot of recognizable NCT type synth sounds and movement. So for example, the bass starts out as, it moves on to, but what I do love hearing a change in is the fact that the yelling appears in the pre-chorus, where it usually appears in the intro and chorus. So it's like we took a, a basket of what makes an NCT song an NCT song, dropped it on the floor, and then just rearranged it in a different way. I'd say the main reason why I like this song so much is the vocal writing and delivery. For example, how the three different NCT members who get the start of each chorus add a completely different character to the chorus. And every time the chorus appears, I love the contrary motion that they add in with this. That's what we've got. Oh. <laughs> Top 10, let's go. Starting off with Mama Moo's Where Are We Now? Oh, this song is a full course meal. And I actually do feel full after listening to this song, although I think maybe a better word to describe that feeling would be content. I think one of the main reasons why I feel so content after listening to this song is because it ends how it begins, except with a slight variation. They strip down the instrumentation to just a piano and they add in a second voice. Perhaps supporting the, where are we now? It doesn't matter as long as we're together kind of concept. A big reason why I love this song so much is because of the way the material develops. The chord progression repeats throughout, but it's always a little different. 
the choruses have the same progression as the verses, but faster. The instrumental break slash bridge has the same progression as the pre-chorus, but this time with different instrumentation and without a vocal line on top of it. And while we allow ourselves to rely on the instrumentation for a sense of comfort, the melody then has so much room to shine. It checks all of the musical make the listener feel goosebumps boxes. There are sudden dynamic changes, vocal harmony, phrases that end on beautiful natural vibrato, some intimate falsetto, rhythmic variation. In the end, this is simply an extremely well-written song. Number nine, literally any song off of Acme's Next Episode album. Each song on Next Episode has had its time as my number one favorite song of the album, so I, I, I couldn't choose just one from it. But I will do a quick review on today's three favorite songs of the album. Everest. This song is like climbing up a mountain. There's a very slow build, building, 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 building until we get to the bridge. When we start off at the bottom of the mountain, there is a lot of unison singing, meaning if there's two voices going on at the same time, they're singing the exact same notes. And then we finally reach the peak of the song, which is the bridge, where we have this burst of harmony. And the build to this bridge alone. The emotion that I feel when we reach there is what makes this song one of my favorites of today off of the album. Hey kid, close your eyes. This song is so much about the atmosphere. The reverby vocals in addition to the reverby instrumental that contrasts with the forever marching straight forward kick and snare. This is a song that uh, while I listen to it, I like to float and really allow the entire soundscape to absorb me. Next one is Stupid Love Song. I remember listening to this song for the first time and having not much to comment on because the song included instrumental textures and a melody where I could kind of predict where it was going. But when I returned to the song, uh, I finally registered how comforting all those elements were and how that really supported the message of the song. And it feels really, really personal and I think what helps support that is just the fact where they have crushes and uh, Sui Khan's voice is placed is because for example in the first verse they are right there they're standing to the right and left of you they are singing to you number eight the blowers featuring Park Unji dandelion The song makes me feel warm while it also feels like I'm being taken on an adventure. I still don't know what the chorus is in this song because it takes all my brain power just to figure out <laughs> just to figure out the meter changes in the instrumental break. The beginning is just me prepping myself to count correctly once the instrumental break arrives. Thanks to the help of my friend Sean, I think we figured it out. Uh, the majority of the song is in a meter we call 12-8, which is if you count along to the song, you can count one, two, three, four, but the underlying rhythms are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then the instrumental break is not that. The instrumental break is not that, and I have no idea how to describe it in layman's terms that you guys will understand me, like not musicians will understand me. It switches to 9-8 with the subdivisions you can count in groupings of 7, 5, 6. So you go like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's how you count along to it. And then when we come back, they freaking speed up. And at this point in the song, I feel like I'm running. I feel like I'm flying. When we're at this faster tempo, the guitar comes in with the triple feel again and I just I feel elated and we're brought down gently back to the beginning instrumental and feel and it's just uh, <sighs> yes moving on number seven Billy ring ring this song is so freaking exciting to listen to it feels bright and innocent and evil all at the same time. And that's because we switch between so many different vibes. We've got the tritone, which is bringing out the darkness. 
in case you don't know what a tritone is it's an interval like i was talking before how there's a third a tritone is oh flat five or sharp four above the home note and so that interval is what the majority of the song is based off of and that's included in the lydian mode and this is one of the only if not the only k-pop song to use the lydian mode and then it's so satisfying when we finally move to a normal sounding chorus is when we get rid of that tritone and we move to an area that feels so comforting. Da, 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 da. I don't know if you've watched our full crew's reaction to this song before, but the reason why we say it sounds so new and different to everything else being released is not only because of the use of the tritone and the Lydian scale, but for me, it's also the various vocal effects that they use, like on the pre-chorus. And then the synth patches the producer chose to use are very J-pop, so the sound is like if J-pop, FX, and Sunny Hill had a baby, which no other group is currently doing, which was why I was so surprised listening to the song for the first time. Okay, number six, Shiny's Atlantis. <laughs> I think Rafi from our Musicians React panel summarized the reason why I like this song with one word. So much charisma, all of them have so much charisma. This song is such a perfect example of Shiny's shiny charisma. This is brought on by the vocal harmony, vocal layers, the fact that the song steps outside of the diatonic key and with either chromaticism or modal mixture. Oh, oh, okay, and one more thing to mention, the groove changes throughout the song. So the feel in the verses, we rely on the rhythm in the guitar, which is a mixture of very short rhythms on strong beats, which are the beats that we bang our head to, and weaker beats, aka what we call syncopation. And in the pre-chorus, the groove completely changes because we start relying on these long, drawn-out chords that only come in on the strong beats. And then the feel changes again once we reach the chorus. It takes it takes a lot from what the, the vibe in the pre-chorus, but then it adds in one thing that changes everything up for me. That synth is fun. It makes you feel the groove in a whole new way. We have now arrived at my top five favorite songs. Number five being, once again, Young K, this time, Want to Love You. This song has my heart in an iron grip. This song has such an incredible depth to its sound. Oceans of reverb, a warm, warm, warm piano timbre, and high resonant plucks. I believe they're guitar plucks, but it comes off sounding like, you know, um... That! But the main thing that keeps me coming back to this song over and over and over is, well, it's the bridge. I don't think I've experienced this kind of emotion listening to pop before. The clarity that comes with the chord changes and, and the swelling production that wraps around you. All right, moving on to number four, NCT Dreams, Hello Future. After listening to this song, I feel very fulfilled. Quote, a man named Chidi from a TV series called The Good Place, there is a quietude in my soul. This song sounds so special. Fresh, welcoming, magical and colorful. I think the song feels this way because of the way they harmonize the main melody and because of the chords chosen in the instrumental. So naturally, let's break this down. So take the verses for example. It starts off with a fourth, which is a pretty open sound. Then it moves up to, which is less open. You feel a little bit more tension in it. And it ends here, which is a fifth, which is super duper open. Welcoming. Now, when it comes to the color, 
we can talk about the chorus. Because the chorus has a leading tone in the vocals, followed closely by a lowered sixth chord in the instrumental, which are two very different colors. While the vocals linger on their major seven, it feels very lifted and open-ended. And then one second later, we borrow from the parallel minor key and it has more of a dark kind of mysterious tone to it. And I think because we have those two contrasting feelings in the chorus so close together, accompanied by flowery vocal harmonies, I find the sound of this chorus incredibly addicting. Speaking of Moonshine, Kenzie, and Adrian, my number three song also happens to be written by them. Tell me, tell me what it is on some when I first listened to this song, I immediately liked it because it gave me the same kind of need to solve a murder mystery movie scene type of vibe that Spoiler, another shiny b -side song does. But Code is a different kind of murder mystery movie scene. It's not like a suspenseful action scene that I imagine Spoiler to be, but rather a gathering of friends to crack a code <laughs> to then eventually solve the mystery. Anyways, it's, it's groovy as heck. There's always something happening on the offense, except for the bridge. They disappear there. It feels like I'm listening to a silver scaled fish just like wiggling its way through the ocean. You know what I mean? It's always evolving. Sometimes it's distorted, sometimes it changes notes, sometimes it's in your right earbud, sometimes it's in your left earbud, sometimes it's muted and quiet. The second verse is my favorite part of this song. It is what I'm always looking forward to whenever I start this song. The rhythms are very short, what we call staccato in classical music, and it feels it feels like Onu has become this very small bird that's going Now while this song has me wriggling my body like a fish or making chirping bird noises along to the melody, the next song has me sitting on the floor crying my eyes out screaming at a wall. My number two song of 2021 is Day6's Even of Day subunit from the ending of a tragedy. Insert, I cry every time, meme. The verses, vocal melody. It feels almost musical theater-y. And on top of its dramatic phrasing, I feel part of the dramaticness comes from the modal mixture they use. This song is in D, and it plays a lot with taking from the major scale and the minor scale. And then on top of that, harmonized high notes are some of my favorite things to listen to. Wanpil has a lower harmony, Youngkei has the higher harmony, and then Youngkei ascends while Wanpil is still on the bottom harmony. And then... And then it's gonna go like... Boom! And of course, before we move on to my song of the year, it is time for my honorable mentions. These are songs that I might not listen to as often as the other 15 songs on this list, but boy do I love them and boy do I want to give them a shout out. All right, number one song, Ghost Nine's Triangle. 
One day I was catching up on K-pop while cleaning. As I was cleaning, the songs were passing by, nothing really caught my ear, and then suddenly this song came on and made me freeze in my tracks. And I just stood in the middle of my room, staring into space, flipping out. This is a song that gently grabs your attention from the beginning and grips your brain harder and harder and harder as the song goes on. At first you're like, ooh, these sounds are cool. And then you're like, oh, I, I didn't expect this feel change. And then the chorus arrives and you're like, okay, I definitely didn't expect this feel change. And then the post chorus comes, you're like, okay, there, there's some modal mixture. We've heard this a lot in K-pop. I, I, I know where I am now. This is, this is a pretty cool sound. And then when the second verse comes, they take out so many of the sounds that they had given us before. And then all of a sudden the pre-chorus arrives and the vocals are different. And then the second chorus, new percussion is added in. Okay, I knew a bridge was coming, but I didn't expect it to start with a full on dubstep dance break. And okay, okay, now we're getting that lighter vibe kind of bridge that we usually get. This is what I was expecting. And when the last chorus arrives, it's combined with everything we've heard before. But they don't leave us hanging. They bring us down, which I greatly needed because the last one minute of the song took my breath away. And at this point in the song, I feel like I can breathe again. And those are my top 15 songs of 2021. I will link a playlist with my top 80 songs of 2021 in the description below. I finally made a Spotify to share various playlists with you all. Before I end this video, giveaway time. To enter the giveaway, simply fill out the form that I have linked in the description. And I will be emailing the winners of this giveaway on this day. Thank you all for everything. I hope you take care and please look forward to all the amazing content we have coming in 2022. More reactions, more exclusive interviews with idols and producers. I will see you in the next video.